Hey, what's up everyone? Brad Chmielewski here with episode 183 of Shatter the Vein. Uh, Worlds is approaching. We're getting so much 5v5 news and a new update has dropped. 2.11 is here probably around the time you're listening to this unless you're one of the first listeners or watchers of it and the patch hasn't updated in your game yet but anyway we're getting a new hero we're getting so many changes uh lots of nerfs lots of buffs happening to a handful of heroes especially lyra lyra's getting some massive changes i'm really looking forward to playing this new hero learning her i posted a video on the youtube channel uh the other day uh, with her that was like my first game with her trying to figure out showing her off to everyone a uh, pretty cool hero pretty cool kit i'm excited for what we start to see out of her she's gonna be super strong i have a feeling uh, so definitely try to figure her out her difficulty level is pretty hard maybe up there with sky I don't know. I still don't play that much Sky, so <laughs> we'll have to see how hard she is. Uh, but yeah, be sure to check out that video, read her abilities on the update notes, and joining me to talk about uh, this new hero and all the changes in this update is Broken Eyes. Broken Eyes is a streamer. Um, he's with the uh, Witch Doctors, and he plays a lot on the PBE. He's one of the testers, so he's been uh, messing with these uh, changes for a little bit, playing this new hero, and he's had uh, a lot of experience with the new game mode, Onslaught. So great to hear his opinion running on this update. It's here on Tuesday. This is a surprise. So the winter season starts. And we get the new hero. I'm so excited, and I can't wait for Worlds and all the 5v5 news that just keeps coming out. All right, let's do it. Let's jump into this week's episode. Shatter the Vein. This is the 183rd episode of Shatter the Vein. My name is Brad Chmielewski, and this is a podcast all about vainglory every week try to break down the news gameplay game tips and hopefully we can all become better players together and every week bringing on people from the community people that love this game play it religiously and this week i have broken eyes joining me welcome hey man thanks for having me i really appreciate it yeah it's good to have you here you've been streaming quite a bit you're on the pbe a lot but i'll let you introduce yourself if people haven't seen or uh, know what you're up to. Yeah, so I've been playing the game basically since the keynote, like pretty much everybody else. Um, <laughs> it, however, was my first MOBA, so I, I'd never played a MOBA before. Um, I saw basically, um, like most people, been a gamer for my whole life, but uh, got to the point where life with family and uh, work got to the point where it was really hard to sit down and really play a console game, right? I mean, I was, right. every time I wanted to play one, it's like, oh, you got to do this update. Oh, you got to turn this on, wait for it to load. It just, it got to the point where I was like, man, I just need something that can give me that fix, but not require all the startup and not require me to go sit at a computer or sit in my gaming chair and stuff like that. And uh, okay. tried Vainglory at first. It was like, yeah, I don't, don't quite know, but um I think just like you, I, around Thanksgiving, I really started playing it real heavy, and I've been okay. hooked ever since. Yeah, there's and MOBAs in general, like you never playing one before. They like once you get pulled in just a little bit, like you are you're hooked, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've been. I mean, I've been to what two live finals now, including Worlds, um, which I, I never really traveled for stuff like that. So that I'm looking for a reason to go to California for basically my whole life, and the mm -hmm. one that makes me finally get up and do it is Vainglory, right? So that that was pretty strong. Went to Seattle, never been there. Went to Seattle for a live event there uh, mm -hmm. and PAX. So the first PAX I went to was because of Vainglory. So a lot of a lot of big things in my life I've done um, um, recently because of that. So that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's all. It's fun. Like, I think a lot of people just need something, like a reason to go on this vacation here. It's like, oh, this is happening and I get to see Seattle or get to see California. So that's cool that you're kind of working that uh, all into like just trips and things like that to, you know, travel. <laughs> yeah, even took the whole family to Worlds. I mean, I took, uh, what, that, that time they were, what, six years old. So I took my oldest, who's 13 now. So she was mm -hmm. uh, 12. The twins, which uh, they're seven now, so they were six. 
and my wife, we all basically go to uh, California to watch the world events. That's awesome. Do the do the kids play with you at all? Uh, play Van Gogh at all? Yeah, I mean, on and off. Believe it or not, they um, they kind of kind of come in and out, like like I was when I was younger. You know, dabbing in, dabbling in multiple games. You know, yeah, I play this game for a month, then go to this game. That's kind of how they are. With the uh, the youngest ones playing more than even the oldest one at this point, even though I took her with me to Seattle. Uh, that oh, was kind of okay. her, her birthday thing is, you know, traveling, going to Seattle, going to PAX, and then going to the uh, live finals. So that was kind of something I was trying to do as a bonding e- event with her, you know. Mm-hmm. That's cool, yeah. Uh, and then you also stream, too. Uh, so, like, you were talking about, like, not having time to play the console games and things like that, but streaming, that that takes its own amount of time and own effort, too. A lot goes into that. Yeah, it's kind of exactly that, man. I mean, it's my hardest thing with streaming is not having the equipment, not having the time. It's getting off the couch, which is like three or four steps away from the computer, right? You know, it's like, <laughs> can I get up and, and go over there real quick? Can I stay awake? Can I engage? Because my, yeah. my job does require me to uh, talk a lot and a, a lot of hours. So to come right. home and talk more. To come home and talk to the family for a little bit. Then when they go to talk to people on online, it, it, it is probably the biggest challenge. I, I won't lie to you. You know, so that's that's it. I mean, I, I love streaming. I, I play the game hours upon hours a night. So it's like, why not stream, right? But it's the engaging with the the public while playing, um, and not getting too salty at the same time. You know, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's almost one reason why I started making YouTube videos instead was like streaming did start to feel exhausting and when you have those one bad games everyone sees you kind of get upset and if you're just doing a video to upload to youtube you can kind of just like get mad internally and no one ever sees that <laughs> i mean that's exactly it man it, exactly it's the it's the i mean it's like everything else in life though that's that's one thing about playing this game with a lot of people who are younger is you get to see them at the stage where they're getting ready to learn some of this multitask and some of these life skills that Believe it or not, I get to bring to the game. I mean, a lot of times, like on PBE, I'm one of the older players on there. So uh, we're mm-hmm. got a Nightwalker trying to keep everybody together. I get to be <laughs> another sane uh, voice uh, most of the time, at least. You know, because I still I can get salty like everybody else, man. <laughs> so right, every once in a while, I'll lose it. And uh, but you know, it, it's it's one of the good things about being there, and and that's really where it came down to. I mean, I got to a point where I must have had four or five accounts that I was maxing out for a season, you know, I mean, I'd have two at like 50, three, I think I had three at two at 50, one at like 48 and then one or two other ones in different regions, even oh, though wow. we're in the high twenties. And I was like, okay, I, I'm, I can't just keep playing this much and I'm, I'm running out of things to challenge myself with. And I'm not sure how I got in the PB as easy as I did, but I managed to know the right people, uh, which doctors, for example, knowing brutal turtle, knowing the right mm-hmm. people sometimes gets you in the door. Uh, same with streaming, you know, it is challenging for some people to get on the the uh, creative team with with uh, Vainglory, but I managed to know the right people and ask at the right time where I got into that, you know. So I stream for them occasionally. So um, a lot, and then even sometimes I try to uh, stream some of the uh, tournaments, you know. So that yeah. un- unfortunately with work that that's more challenging than it should be because I get off too late to often uh, start a lot of the streams or the kids are still awake. So I don't get to do that as often as I'd like. But I try, man. Anything I can do to help the community and Vainglory, uh, I commit to. That's awesome, yeah. And you mentioned witch doctors. Yeah, you want to tell everyone a little more about that? Like you said Brutal Turtle there is involved with it, and like you talked about it. But, yeah, it's a name that comes up every now and then, and I feel like it flies under the radar a little bit. Yeah, well, a lot of people know me as a heavy uh, Gangstar supporter, right? Uh, mm-hmm. To the point where a lot of people who wanted me to be in their guilds wouldn't ask me if I find out later because they thought I was already in Gangstars. <laughs> so I'm pretty heavy supporter of Gangstars all the time. But I wouldn't even ask to join Gangstars because I was really dedicated to uh, a player, Mr. Batabuchi, who started started my old guild. And I just wouldn't leave him, man. I just I had two, three accounts in his guild with him. Uh, I'm, I'm fighting him every day to be the top the top person in the guild. And okay. I just wouldn't leave him. And then um, Brutal, who I'd been playing with and, and met on stream, you know, he invites me to Witch Doctors, and I'm like, uh, man, you know, this is hard because, you know, I, I love playing with you. I love the idea that you, you come out with Witch Doctors, but I can't leave my boy, uh, Mr. Batabuchi. He said, well, don't leave him. Bring him with you. Okay. And that was it, man. I joined Witch Doctors, which is uh, 
Um, an up and coming guild that does a lot of different things. We've had a couple tournaments already for um, uh, Blitzkrieg is what we call it. So we've had a couple Blitzkrieg tournaments already. Nice. Um, they do a lot of get togethers in Toronto, which is where most of the the uh, founders and, and uh, lead people and wish doctors are. Um, but the ultimate thing that, that I'm hoping that uh, comes together is, is one of the things that I really thought they were uh, going towards at that time, which was uh, starting the team, getting into VIS, and hopefully uh, getting into v, uh, V8. You know? So that's where we're moving towards now. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the big thing I think that leads us there, and, and he'll hate that I'm saying this on your podcast, but it really kind of falls on Brutal Turtle. You know, okay. I mean, he, okay. he, he really is our spearhead for the competitive scene. Uh, and, and a lot of people don't know who he is, but to me, one of my favorite uh, competitive players. I mean, watching his glaive is um, – I hear people say, oh, this person's godly on glaive. I'm like, no, and, until you're better than Brutal Turtle, I don't want to hear you're <laughs> godly on glaive, right? And so, I mean, that's that's one of my favorite players, man. And it's, um, you know, he plays a lot like I either play – at least I think I play. Or at least okay. I want to play, right? He's very aggressive, no fear, that kind of Von C dive in uh, type of mentality. And uh, you can see him right now. He's played a little bit in the collegiate league uh, of late, if, you, if you've uh, followed that at all. So he's right, playing yeah. for, uh, I believe it's University of uh, Toronto or some Canadian team. I don't, you know, I'm not as good with the team. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> he's, he's up over there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and, and he had went to Gangstars for a little bit, but uh, the same thing that stopped him from, from really getting too aggressive competitive is what stopped him from being uh, competitive in Gangstars, which is moving into the team house, uh, taking it seriously when he's got his college career ahead of him. So uh, he's a great analyst, but I, I think ultimately he, he's, uh, he's losing his, his – uh, calling which is competitive man he's, he's real strong but uh, we've got right, a team yeah, and starting right now and they're, they're just not they're not ready yet but hopefully they will be by the time vis starts mm-hmm. yeah and you know everyone who talks about brutal turtle like just talks about how great of a person he is he's so nice like i've had him on here and just like great conversations and he's is someone that knows the scene and uh, i think the competitive scene especially really well so it makes sense for him to help lead this for witch doctors to get into this a little more you know, it's funny too that you know, we say this. I always make fun of him and a couple of the people that uh, are in our guild that are from Canada. I'm like, you guys are just too nice, man. Like, do, do you guys <laughs> ever actually get angry? But as I'm thinking about it, I don't think I've ever seen him salty in a game. You know, <laughs> so it's like, okay. <laughs> what the heck is going on with these people from Canada, man? But uh, yeah, they're, they're the nicest people you ever meet, man. Nice. Mm-hmm. So would you would you join the competitive team, or you just don't have wouldn't have time and kind of not what you want to do? Um, I mean, the time thing would, would obviously be a challenge, but I'll be the first to admit, um, other than playing Arden, I'm probably not good enough to join competitive. Um, <laughs> I, I think a lot of the Arden nurse that you're, you're going to see coming up are directed towards me and of course a couple <laughs> other people, but, uh, you know, I go into PBE and it's like, Aaron, can you play something else? Broken eyes, play something else other than Arden. Uh, throw a name in a hat. I'm just gonna pull somebody. Cause that's who I play. <laughs> I'm an Arden man. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Uh, I guess that's like a perfect segue then as to jump into this update. Vain Glory News. This week is update 2.11 is dropping a day early. We were just chatting about this before we hit record that, yeah, they're usually on Wednesday. So we're getting a Tuesday update this time. And I'm kind of happy about this. I, I got another job I do on the side, which I'm going to do tomorrow morning. But uh, um, because I work on Wednesday, I often miss the, the dev streams and the ability to play on stream. So unless they do like last time and do this real quick update, I'm going to try to get on a couple uh, uh, st- games on stream and, and finally join the dev stream and watch it as the update's going down. So that'll be cool. Other than the, the reset of my ELO. <laughs> that that will suck a little bit, <laughs> right? Yeah, they did. They didn't say if they're going to have a downtime this time. I would say probably not, but hopefully they continue doing the streams and talking about the the patch notes or the update notes and having people play because I think that's a big benefit to people just to know what's happening. Even if you can't play, if you're at work or at school, you can watch a little bit of the stream and get an idea of like what are these changes? What do I need to know? Because when you don't read them, which I think most people don't read them, you have no idea what happened. 
Well, and, and that's the other thing too about being in PBE. I, I'm, I, I'd say I'm one of the few people in PBE who plays consistently, who's not a numbers guy, right? I'm not an analyst type of uh, mindset. Even though I always thought I was a numbers guy before I met these young people who just talk crazy, you know, stats. <laughs> You know, that's the one thing that I think people miss is you can't just – I mean, even – I get these emails every night. It tells me what's changed, and I read through them, but I don't understand them the same way that playing with NivMet for 10 minutes explains, right? Hey, yeah. what does this do? How does that work? When should I use this? What is the mindset around this change? I mean, he'll sit there at some points, you know, even while they're waiting for the, the, the update to go live, and they'll talk for like freaking two hours about like the math of it all. Why? Oh, wow. Okay. He'll, he'll ask our opinion. <laughs> yeah. He's like, these are the things I'm thinking of changing. What do you think? I mean, he's thinking of changing these things two patches from now. And we're talking about it right now. We're waiting for the update to download, right? But that's the mindset of most of the people that I, I hang out with in PBE every night is they're, they're literally looking at, you know, uh, one, like we had the, the uh, what was it, the aftershock change, right? Where it's like one, mm -hmm. one point or something like that, 1%. You know, it's like this little bit doesn't really do anything. But truly, they look at the numbers and what does it really do, right? How, how much is that going to affect the hero? Is it going to make it to where you buy this other item that you may not have bought because of that 1% difference that, that Apple yeah. Shop did, right? So, I mean, it, it's, I mean it's, it's a big thing with the updates, and hopefully um, I can play a part of it tomorrow. But hopefully they keep the dev stream going. That's mm -hmm. it's one of my big and things, that I, I, my pet peeves. The dev stream was one of the reasons I stayed with Vanglory in the first place. Yeah, because the, yeah, the devs being part of that community, like you said, doing if it's on voice for those PBE things or if it's on stream, just talking through things and interacting with the community. I feel like that's such a a good part of Vanglory and Super Evil Megacorp that I hope they don't forget and don't uh, don't fade away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I completely agree, man. And not even just that, like even just the personalities that were there, like you know, as they they went a couple times trying to change the personalities to keep it going. As much as I liked some of the people that did it, I mean, it's kind of hard to not have, you know, uh, playoff beard and Z Kent. I know, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's like the you know, it's like, man. I know they got more important things to do, but bring them in for one hour. Just give me one hour, man. Come yeah, on. right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Bring them lunch. Let them talk while they're eating lunch. I don't care if I see them stuff in their face. That's cool. Just let them talk for like an hour, man. Come on. Mm -hmm. Let us let us know they're still there and you know still <laughs> playing and part of it all too. Yeah, <laughs> reminds exactly. us exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. man. Uh, so yeah, even if you're not going over all the numbers of these updates, like still knowing who got buffed, who got nerfed, is a little is important for when you're picking heroes to rank up, especially. But the biggest thing I think, or the most fun thing I like in each update, is when we get a new hero. And this hero is called uh, Vara. I believe I'm saying that right. And she is a lightning mage hero. Uh, let me quickly go over her abilities, and then we can talk about... Uh, I know you got to play some of her on the PB. I've played a few games with her. Not enough to really know what I'm doing yet, but a few games. <laughs> uh, so first off, her heroic perk is called Lightning Chain. Uh, Vara's attack deal crystal damage. If Vara holds her ground after attacking, she will strike her target and additional enemies with a bolt of chain lightning. Um, so if you've ever played League of Legends, this is kind of like a static shiv kind of proc that happens. So just you get three or four minions kind of get zapped as well. Yeah. Her A is called Storm Sport, Storm Forge Spear. Vara throws a lightning sphere that deals damage to the first enemy hit. The lightning will then bounce to nearby enemies dealing damage. Uh, this ability is super long. It's going to go off your iPad or your phone screen, so you can barely even see where the edges of it are. And it does take a little bit to aim because it is pretty slow. Uh, her B, so after gaining... Or after gathering power, Vara's next two move commands will instantly dash to a chosen location, um, dealing damage to enemies upon arrival. Vara gains energy and some of her health as a barrier for each enemy hit. And then her ultimate, we all love uh, great ultimates. This one, Vara channels uh, for a short period of time and she calls down a series of lightning strikes on all enemies on the map. So wherever she is, wherever they are, this comes down. Um, ranking up this ability increases Vara's attack speed and the number of enemies struck by chain lightning and stormed forge spear. Whew. All right. So have you had much experience playing with her yet? Have you got a few games on your belt? 
Yeah, and I, I won't lie, I'm not the um, I'm not gonna be the the pro barrier player in uh, in Vainglory, but uh, she is definitely strong. I played a lot of games with her, especially of late. Um, she's really the epitome of all the best heroes in the game right now, right? I mean, mm-hmm. she's got a lot of that that uh, channeling ability with like Vox, where you can hit one minion and and damage multiple, or hit one hero and damage multiple. She's got the best aspects of Kestrel's kit, where she's got a skill shot that does a lot of damage. Right. <laughs> it has a long range, right? A little bit longer range than Kestrel's uh, current uh, A ability is right now. Right. It and is harder to hit than Kestrel's. It, day, it is. <laughs> well, yeah, you're cor- uh, correct on that one. It's definitely a little bit harder to hit. But that's where I think, you know, when you look at her, she's listed as difficulty hard. And yeah. I would I would go a step further and say difficulty hardest. <laughs> right. I mean, because that's that's really the, the thing about her is she can be real weak if you don't do her abilities correctly. A lot of it requires you to be stagnant or chain abilities together. Right. So her A is hard to hit a lot of times because it has a wind up. But if you do right. it after the B or during the alt, the wind up uh, uh, fades away, at least uh, to the most part. Right. Where it's much easier to hit. Um, mm-hmm. So that's one thing with her ability there. Same with the ultimate. Her ultimate leaves her vulnerable for a long period of time. But, again, right. you can come out of that ultimate by using her A ability uh, a tad early, right? So if you people who learn that are going to be good. And the problem that I think you're going to run into, especially when 5v5 comes, is vision is going to be super important for her mm-hmm. and against her. Because if you're, if you're visible anywhere on that map, that ultimate's going to hit you. You could literally be sitting there farming minions away from nobody, and all of a sudden this freaking <laughs> ultimate hits you. And take it from experience. What you hear that Niv, when you hear Nivmit laughing maniacally in the corner before this ultimate hits you, <laughs> knowing that it's about to kill you by your base, you know you're going to automatically hear that every time you play against her. He won't yeah. even play in the game anymore. You still hear his laughter in the back of your head, and <laughs> you always think it's coming. And then that's, right. that's, that's that's really what's going to make her big. I think mm. she might be and, my my new main when I'm not playing Captain. I, I, okay. I mean, I'll play her even more than I'm one of the few people who play CP Vox. If that makes sense. So okay, her, her basic ability fits right into my wheelhouse. Yeah, the basic ability with that chain lightning is really cool. Like just seeing that happen, and you re- you realize, like with Vox, you're like, I think I can hit you from here. I'm gonna, yeah, <laughs> I got gotcha. you exactly. Exactly. You know, it's, it's kind of like, and, and like Turnwalker. I mean, you see coming out, she's got a lot of like when you look at her her kid, she's gonna remind you a lot of Reza, um, a lot of um, Turnwalker, where. The chaining is, is some of the big things, right? It's like you don't always have to hit the person you're trying to kill. Just hit somebody near the person you're trying to kill, right? You know, yeah. it's it's it, a lot of those things that they've learned in the recent heroes, they're kind of combining together. And that's one of the things that surprised me about Vainglory is every time they came up a hero, I was like, what are they going to do next? They seem to have hit every one of these um, cliche heroes. But it came to the point of tweaking this, tweaking that, and combining different people's abilities into another new person. And I think they've they hit the nail on the head with this. Mm-hmm. And I think that that B is going to be an uh, important thing to pay attention to. I think that's what I hadn't really figured out when I played my few games with her is using your dashes to like gain energy and gain health back because she does consume a lot of energy. So if you can get some back, uh, this it's important. So I was never using my B correctly. I think I'd use it either to like chase or to run away <laughs> i mean and you can and that's another thing about yeah. her is you can use it to run away but that's the thing that i think that i'll be i mean right now i'm not bad with her i mean you, you know we you and i played a couple games last night yeah. with her and I, I played a few more before where i finally have gotten it down to the point where i can play a fight right i could okay. probably play her at poa let's say that right i could probably play her at poa not quite good enough to go into the glorious with her yet but that's what <laughs> i'm missing is the ability to use that b ability and get the double dash right to hit the the, the dash my next two abilities and that's yeah. where you know you have that that familiarity with uh reza and idris where they really kind of you know blink or or sidestep and stuff like that and do damage at the same time yeah but i'm i'm excited to see how people start playing her and building her and just seeing what comes out of her because like you said i think she's she's going to be pretty strong so I just hope here. I never learn how to build her as captain, because if that happens, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, and then with this update, we're getting this uh, seasonal map and seasonal game mode. 
So first off, the map. This is the map we've seen uh, last season. It's kind of the winter-themed map. There's snow and ice all over. Uh, I like. I love the seasonal maps. I wasn't a fan. I'm not a fan of the winter map because it is hard to see a lot of these abilities that land on the ground, like uh, especially someone like uh, Lorelei, whose all of her stuff is kind of like a light blue. And then when you throw a scarf in there, it is hard to see what's happening on this map, personally. That's just my my feedback on this map. But I love seeing seasonal maps. Well, I completely agree. And, and having this being the first hero that launches with a skin at the same time, and it being a winter skin, so you know it's going to be played with a blue skin, she doesn't quite make that any better. But I will say that the few changes they made to, to this um, this map skin, I think do help a little bit. There's a lot more red where you see yeah. the red of the ground kind of shining through. So it, it helps a little bit. Um, I won't say that I played enough matches on it to where I can say it resolves every hero and every skin issue that we had last year. But I think it does a little bit better. And I also think our devices being a little bit better, you, you get maybe. with the newer devices, you get a little more crispness in it. So maybe it won't be as bad as saying playing on a, you know, now we're playing on an iPad Pro, right? Versus yeah. last year it was an iPad Air 1 or Air 2, right? Or people were still using uh, iPhone 5Cs versus now they're using <laughs> iPhone Xs or 10s or whatever you want to call them, right? You know, so, so I, I'm hoping that that will help a little bit. Yeah, hopefully. They do, they do try to tweak it and make sure it's visible. But, yeah, sometimes it does get hard. But that's maybe why we haven't seen one in so long. But the winter themes, it's fun. Uh, but then the seasonal game mode. So I think a lot of people, even before this has launched, I've seen on Twitter, people are like, oh, no, this is only a seasonal game mode. Uh, and that's that's what it seems like right now. So this one's called Onslaught. And I think this is what's been played probably the most on PBE. That I, I The few games I've played and what I've been seeing people play is Onslaught. So what it is, it's a new brawl game mode where it's a best of five. You go into a match, you pick a hero, uh, then you're given money, you can choose to buy stuff or not because there's different, I guess, ways you can spend the money and get the gold and it kind of scales. Definitely pay attention to that and give that a try. Um, And then you can pick a talent. You won't be able to pick a talent for every game if you play all the way to the best of five. So you have to decide, do you want to pick a talent for the first game mode or maybe wait that out till the second one to see what happens? Um, and then you go in to basically the middle of the map and it shrinks down and they are over, I think, within a minute each round. So it's fast. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of this game mode so far? Well, I think this is going to be a, a weird one, to be honest with you. It's one that when I was first starting playing, I was like, come on, man, this, what the heck are we doing? <laughs> like, like, I felt like there were ways we could tweak the current modes to where they were better. But yeah. now that I've got a lot of games under my belt and really, like, I'm playing it with somebody like Nivmet, who literally, even again, even as an enemy team, explains what he's doing and why, and you watch it, there is a lot of freaking, um, you know, tactics in here right that's the big thing you learn with this is that do you go all out on round one knowing it makes you vulnerable on round three and four right do you go do you hold back on round one knowing that you're playing from behind when you get to round three and four um do you go up and try to run through the lane and come around the other team's back do you, you know what do you do to play yeah. it's, it's more tactic than it is gameplay in my opinion right um same as the hero you pick Picking a hero mm-hmm. that can displace somebody at the very end when that 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 zone gets to the point where you're real small and you afterburn somebody out of the zone, you don't even have to have any abilities for that to be a good kill. So right. I, I think it's something that you'll see uh, will make it and will last. But what I'm I'm interested to see more than that is that what you're seeing right now on PVE because it is limited to how many people can play. Uh, the same thing we saw even before it was uh, streamed was that. These are coordinated teams. Everybody, for the most part, is in Discord. Um, your team sometimes are talking, you know, the whole team, the whole game is in Discord or even split, and it's coordinated. Yeah. So you see a lot of tactics. Well, what's going to happen <laughs> tomorrow when all of a sudden it's solo queue? Uh, that is the one that really surprised me, where you have one person who doesn't buy and the other team buys because they're not coordinated. So it's right, gonna, yeah. th- this is going to see – I think that will determine whether or not this game will last is the solo queue and dual queue part of this when added to the the triple queue you know will you see and, and maybe you'll see more triple queues because of that 
Yeah, just because you can work that out. Because um, it is interesting. I The few I played, I quickly got, I guess, a little frustrated because I'm like, I I just die instantly <laughs> sometimes. You're just like, what happened? Like, there, You don't even have a moment to think about it. When a team decides to jump on you, you're dead. Like there's not there's nothing you can do. <laughs> which which is one of the things that's kind of funny about this is that you're sitting here like most of your major damage dealers are 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 very really fragile. And this game mm-hmm. mode makes you get close to the person you don't want to get close to. So right, I think yeah. you're gonna see a lot more tanky players. A lot of people like me who build everybody captain will will do well. But it, it's it's you know, it's it's all tactics, man. I mean, you get an invisible hero, they can sneak around and hide until the box goes in. And then all of a sudden now he comes in, one shots you or gets you low enough to where when you when the box goes in, you know, you sometimes it's down to the wire. You have no idea who's going to win because there's two or three people still alive, still almost full hell, and they got uh-huh. nowhere to go. Who survives? And sometimes it's a, it's a coin flip, you know. So it's it's fun, though. I will say it's fun. I mean, it's fun. Uh, I think it's going to be great for streamers. Streamers who like to play with the uh, community will love it. Um, people who like the uh, triple Q. And I think also it's a great way to prepare people for 5v5, right? Because right now you, you got, um, you know, at max a 3v3 fight, but more often than not, it's catching somebody out. This is going to yeah. show how strong the device needs to be to handle a one-minute team fight with six <laughs> people. You know? That's true, yeah. And all the abilities going off, all the fire burning, yeah, just everything happening. and. <laughs> knowing where it is too yeah so that'll be that'll be interesting too i guess yeah i hadn't thought about it as like a preparation for 5v5 like get ready for big battles well were you playing with me yesterday when i did my captain sky with the six deaths from above in like two seconds oh no i don't think i i don't think i saw that one that's Mm. that that's a it's almost like a cheat code to be honest with you because anybody (laughs) playing on anything older than an iphone 7 or 7 plus that is going to crash your device. <laughs> you know I mean? Oh, okay. You got, you got literally like <laughs> six deaths from above in about a 25-second span of time. And they may not do any damage with the build that I have, but it stuns and slows everybody. Yeah. Right? And it, causes, but, yeah, but it causes chaos, right? It, it <laughs> does. And, but that's one of the big things about this mode is that, you know, I want to go into round one and I want to I want to demolish my opponent. That's my normal mindset is mental as much as strategic. If they see me just demolish them that quickly – it kind of gets me in their head, right? But with most of the talents that I generally use, only being able to use it one time, I often would go in, build my echo, and 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 all of a sudden I realize I don't have my ultimate round one. I just <laughs> right. literally wasted my first purchase, you know? So, you know, it, it's definitely one of those things where you got to really think about which talent are you using when, which item are you using when, um, you know, when are you going to initiate the fight, and then again, your composition, right? You, everybody can't just pick who they want. It's different than a battle royale. It's different than a blitz, right? You you yeah. gotta have a team that really matches up. And you know, in these private modes, we kind of know who the other team might be picking. You're not gonna know that in solo queue. You know, mm-hmm. so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, and it's uh, it's also tilting when you do look at the other team and realize you lost to a team that didn't buy any items yeah that's, <laughs> that's where like, you go against a triple what? captain cop and they didn't buy anything and they still won and yeah, you know that, and you know it's over at that point you know because yeah. if you go against finn you know he's basically got one win guaranteed there's at least five heroes that had a guaranteed win in their kit mm-hmm. so if you lose against that team and they didn't buy any items it's, it's going to be very hard to win this <laughs> that that uh that battle ultimately. yeah uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. I think people are gonna have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it'll definitely be a. It's quicker. It's almost feels quicker than uh, Blitz. Uh, but you do have five modes, so it takes a it takes a little bit of time. But yeah, they happen fast, and you're in and out. So yeah. And everybody remember, thumbs up. I hate sitting there for twenty seconds waiting for the match to start. And like, dude, just the thumbs up. Please. Right. So you have hard to match. <laughs> you have to hit the ready button, and you, <laughs> you gotta can, hit ready. Yeah, don't worry if you hit it multiple times. You just get more numbers there. It just keeps going. So you can spam it all day just letting people know you're ready. So <laughs> make sure you hit ready when you get in there. Which is a whole other competition. Who can get the most thumbs up before the match starts? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you got a lot of different things. But I, I think Onslaught will stay. I think ultimately you're going to see uh, more small things like this come in. And you'll probably get to a point where I, I, I bet you something after Onslaught, whatever comes after that, You'll get to the point where you no longer will pick Blitz. 
you no longer pick Battle Royale or Onslaught. It's going to be a random thing, as it was in, in games like Halo and stuff like that. Oh, that'd be fun, yeah. You didn't know what you were getting. You were getting some random mode, right? Mm-hmm. And that'd be a good way to continue them to use the the 3v3 map. Like, maybe that's where these game modes are living and they're not living in the 5v5. Like, it's just kind of separate and they're random and you kind of still get to play this map, like a classic kind of game mode kind of thing. But What I thought was funny about this, too, the first time I played it, um, it had been, I had been out for a couple of days before I saw it. But by the first time I played it, I literally had been thinking about a mode in my head. And this is... Not exactly, but it's at the same area of the map and the kind of the same concept where I was like, hey, let's just have this area of the map and you just got to sit there and take minions from all angles and see how many you can go before you die, right? <laughs> you know? And that was something I was thinking of, just some kind of just, you know, you know uh, what they call horde mode. Uh, horde mode where it's just, let's just see, it, it help you practice your last hits, help you right. practice conserving energy, and, and how far can we go before I die, right? There you go. That sounds pretty good for a yeah one v one or one a personal mode. Kind of cool. That's kind of nice. Hmm. Let's see, I'm sure they have lots of ideas brewing, so you might see something like that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully. Um, and then so then yeah, we talked about a little bit. Mentioned these balance changes, but I don't want to run over all these heroes. But you did mention Arden that. He's getting some big changes. Arden right now in update 2.10, probably the top hero pick. Like he is going on your team or getting picked by the other team. Like he doesn't get banned, but he just gets picked. It's it's a weird thing. I don't know why anyone's not banning him, but he's just getting picked. He's been strong in 2.10, and now he's paying the price here in 2.11. Uh, what do you think of these changes? Because the biggest change, I think, is the gauntlet change. Uh Basically, if you were used to using that double gauntlet with the Echo, this can no longer happen. You can still throw down a gauntlet, but when you throw down another one, the first one disappears. This is this uh, this has got to make you sad. Well, and this is kind of where I'm torn on it, right? So, and I never told Niv or anybody this because you know it, it coming from me, it, you you can't really complain about an ardent nerf because, like I said, you know if I was going on the team, it didn't matter that. We were blind picking. They knew if I had a chance, I was picking art, right? So, okay. It, you know, it's kind of like I can't say, hey, I don't, I don't like this change because I'm not supposed to like this change. But I will say I think it's a little unfair because – um, it does. I, but by the way, I don't think it really hurts me, and that's that's the funny thing about it because the way I play Arden, and almost none of these changes truly affect me except for his health reduce, reduction. That's really the only one that hurts the way my gameplay is. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get kills with him, so blood for blood doesn't affect me. Um, I may start maxing out just to, to get that uh, percent bonus, but uh, I always was the one watching the uh, the, um, the professional games and wondering why the pro player threw a double gauntlet in the first place. Because in my opinion, you don't ban- you, you very rarely should you have been echoing the gauntlet anyways. It, you had a much better chance of surviving if you had a good lane or a good jungler and you were echoing your vanguard, my personal okay. opinion. So it doesn't really hurt me. There was the times that I use the Echo Gauntlet were typically trying to escape or stop a fleeing uh, enemy or protecting a fleeing ally. That was really the only times I would ever uh, echo the gauntlet anyways. Okay. But I, I think it's unfair just because, I mean, for example, you're, you're reducing his damage. But he already was underperforming in that role, right? I mean, you had heroes that really doesn't make sense that there isn't more Lance play. Because he was better at, at most of these things, right? Uh, your best thing about Arden was his ability to uh, vanguard to a, uh, an ally to get out of trouble or to get the ally out of trouble. But Lance can protect his ally, and he can get out of trouble without having an ally around him, something Arden can't do, right? That's true. Um, so right. you had a lot of people, I thought, that still did things better. The difference is you're almost always going to see Arden, especially in lower tier play, because he's so easy to play. <laughs> and he's, in my opinion, obviously, yeah, I play him a lot. He's so fun to play. So I yeah. think that that's really what his downfall is, is his game style, not his stats, right? Because there's other heroes that truly are, are better picks. Like, for example, if you if you picked Arden um, ahead of me, I didn't care because I was going to pick Churnwalker anyways, and Churnwalker counters Arden. So <laughs> right, okay. I, I didn't care, right? I mean, that was the <laughs> two heroes I played the most of. Um, and, and Churnwalker, however relies on his teammates more than Arden does. So 
you can be a great churn walker and lose a game because your heroes don't understand hit the chained enemy or if the enemy's chained and the healing uh, treant is chained hit the healing treant right? They, right people don't understand the concepts of churn walker which is why you won't see him banned and picked as much as arden but he's a better pick than arden in, in almost every way you know mm -hmm. at least in my opinion so you got a lot of a lot of different things but the whole point of, of most of these changes for everything you see is to make sure everybody gets played right i mean that's the thing right. you know i still hate to see a catherine i know you love catherine so i don't want to ever see <laughs> a solo to you again but i hate seeing catherine you know, you and um you and ed the shred i don't like seeing you guys ever play catherine i'll still <laughs> ban her if i can <laughs> you know that that's that's my thing i don't like that um lyra people ban lyra i don't really care i know she's going to heal everybody but my whole thing again is using my vanguard to you know quickly burst down somebody so right. if you do it right, if your if your solo queue teammates know when I vanguard you, don't run behind the turret, run towards the enemy. You should win. You know. Sure. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But we'll have to see. How, yeah, it sounds like these changes don't affect your play style a little bit. I think they do. Just kind of maybe not make Arden that top pick for a lot of people in solo queue right now. So hopefully yeah, we'll see other heroes. Yeah, Lost Boy's off. He's pro he's probably upset. Lost Boy's not gonna <laughs> like this too much because you know his he you know everybody knows his video. He's gonna kill like the whole other team with his Arden. I'm not doing that. When I do Blitz, I don't. I pick the Vanguard, the A ability. I don't pick his other two abilities. Okay. <laughs> this, stuff, this stuff doesn't affect me, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned Lyra. Like Lyra got a little bit of a change. Her healer, her healing ability was maybe just a little too strong. Still, they continue to nerf this. Uh, around other heroes, but sometimes she just comes out on top. So they're bringing all that down again. So it's not yeah, going to be healing as much. I feel that hers, I don't know who her, who plays Lyra that isn't going to feel this effect. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I don't play her as much as I did because her last nerf really hurt my game style. Because again, I didn't, you know, like playing a game of Brutal Turtle, he'd always, he'd watch me on stream and say, Air, I broke it. Stop using her, her heal and blowing it up trying to kill people. <laughs> That's what I, wanted to do. I wanted to blow people out with essential, so they, that change really affected me. Um, but I don't see any any way that her changes don't heavily affect her play. Now I will tell you, she still gets picked in PBE consistently. Mm -hmm. um, I feel she's going to be hugely strong in five v five, where uh, um, movement speed is a huge plus. You're going to see a lot of people playing heroes that have uh, movement speed. I think um, yeah. in, in their kit, but. You're right. She's not going to be healing people as much. Her speed boost from the hill will not allow people to disengage or engage as much. Um, and the health ratio, this is where you need somebody like Brutal Turtle or Nivmet to tell you what 2% really does to <laughs> But, uh, it, you know, I think it's going to affect everything. Yeah, you'll feel it a little bit. Uh, and then the other hero that got hit, like, I think maybe the hardest was Lorelei, um, which is really, it's kind of funny that she got hit so hard. Like she's, she's a very good hero. She's also kind of hard to play uh, compared to some of the other captains and just heroes out there. But when she gets played, it's very good. Like when I see her as a, a carry, she's wrecking as a captain it's like, oh my gosh, what is happening here? But when I play her, it doesn't usually work that way. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, but they are tweaking all of her stuff down because she was kind of getting, I think they said, the best of both worlds. Uh, she was doing a ton of damage. Like You could easily kill someone as a Captain Lorelei, just as a, you could uh, uh, carry Lorelei. So everything is coming down a little bit, um, and this is, this is going to be a major change to her. So I think... I uh, may not see as much of her. Well, and, and uh, this is not confirmed, but I, I think she was purposely put out a little bit strong. And I, <laughs> I actually agree with it, right? I, I think putting out your new heroes strong, as I think you're going to find the, the current, the new heroes come out tomorrow is also strong. Yeah. It, one, gets people to want to buy her, right? So that's, that's obviously a good goal of any company is, is get people to want to spend money on your new item. Um, in ranked, it gives you somebody that you probably should ban for two reasons. One, does a person on your team really day one know how to play a new hero? Probably not. <laughs> ban it immediately. Doesn't matter if you don't, don't want to go against it, don't want to have it on your team, just ban it. Which means the people who were being banned previously will get more gameplay. Um, reasons that they were banned probably received a nerf, so you'll get to see if that nerf made sense, if it helped or hurt. So I think it, it's something good there. 
Um, you, you just get people to want to play it and you get other heroes yeah. played more often. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. And I think Lorelai was that way. She was a, a dual threat. Um, movement speed being something that, again, I think was underplayed. I think the best Lorelai players, I mean, this is, a, I, I was playing a game with um, Shinkaigen um, mm -hmm. right, right before she, she came out. And um, first, I'm, I'm playing Arden, so I'm winning the match. And, and of course, <laughs> my iPad dies at the wrong time. So I come in and watch, watch Shinkaigen uh, play Lorelai. And I'm watching on my phone from the spec client. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, it's like that one moment when things click. We like, this no, is how she's supposed to be played. And that's one thing I haven't seen maximized is people using her movement speed to get, for example, cruel into a fight or out of a fight. Um, things like that that, you know, I was watching him completely utilize to, to tear people down. Um, so she's really strong everywhere. Like you said, you get a little mm -hmm. bit of CP in her kit. She's causing damage. Um, she's keeping her, her allies alive. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know but, if these nerfs are too aggressive or underwhelming. Again, she gets a lot of play still in PBE because we, we specifically test this. And I, yeah. I, don't, see, I don't see it being uh, underwhelming. But we'll find out. And if they need to, they'll hot, they'll hot patch her even weaker or stronger. Mm -hmm. I think one reason we maybe, even in solo queue, if you haven't seen much Lorelei, it's because we haven't seen the professional players play her we you're not seeing people like play her correctly like you said because no one shown us how really unless you're watching people's streams and they're really good with her um going into you know the end of the season uh, she wasn't available she'll be available here at worlds so we're gonna see lorelei probably a lot i guarantee we'll see her banned or picked quite a bit and now you're gonna try to take her into a game after watching worlds and you're not gonna have the same effect so this is gonna it's gonna have a disconnect for a lot of people uh, watching and then playing um, in the coming weekend. Yeah. And that's the one thing that's kind of weird is that, you know, you know, I, I'm okay with her uh, hero coming out strong because they don't get played right away in pro C, mm -hmm. but she is going to be played on her previous build in pro. But I think again, what you're going to see is uh, you'll see probably a lot more banned, but I don't think she was, you know, the word OP is always thrown around. No, I don't think yeah. she's OP. I just think she's strong. Yeah. And there are other people who, who are strong. I mean, Lyra's still not going to have this nerf. Arden's still not going to have the nerf. You know, you, you're going to have a lot of people who still are considered strong, um, you know, in the in the, the world. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. And maybe and again, if they find out she's too strong, they still have 14 days or 13, however many days left, where they can still put a hot patch out for that. <laughs> that's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably won't do it because that's kind of unfair. But, you know, they could if they had to. Mm -hmm. um, some do a black feather, what? you know six patches ago where he was banned from having a certain build right, right. You, couldn't, you couldn't buy a, a certain item on him so i mean it's it's always possible yeah uh lots of other just small number changes i'm surprised flicker didn't get even more of a buff than he got uh but still just to this moon cloak ability they keep just only tweaking this for some reason and that's from what you hear people say that is not the thing they want tweaked but you know, I'm not the one running all these numbers all the time. And so I still don't think this change brings Flickr at all into the meta. <laughs> well, Unfortunately. And this, is, this is where I've always been confused. I freaking hate playing against a Flickr, man. I mean, I'm not saying I lose consistently to him, but it's like playing against Taka, you know, 10 it's annoying, ago yeah. or whatever. It's just annoying and it requires you to change your build. For any captain going against Flickr and really any any uh, hero in the game, you had to change your first items based off the fact that you knew you were going into a Flickr. You had to buy a, a flare. You had to buy a scout trap. I had to first build a contraption versus a fountain. I had to do something. And um, if you've ever seen a Flickr in a, you know, for example, you don't see a lot of Flickrs in Blitz. At least I don't. I don't see a lot of them in Ranked or anything. But you'll no. see a lot of them if you play. I've been playing a lot of Battle Royale lately. And you'll see Flickr and destroys man everything let them do <laughs> any type of damage and you're just like why can i not move out of this freaking quicksand right but, <laughs> but i mean that's you know and of course he's got talents so that changes things a little bit but i think i think you'll be surprised and i don't I, i'm sad that i'm saying this hopefully all the other regions aren't listening to this i have a feeling that somebody specifically probably somebody like uh um uh, flash x is going to play flicker and show you okay. why he should be strong, to be honest with you. But it just depends, you know, again, on who you're going against, right? You know, you go flicker into Lance. I, I would probably say Lance wins that. 
right? So yeah. is, is, is it because he's easily countered or is it because he's weak? I can't answer that question. That's a that's a little bit above my pay grade, but I'll be honest, <laughs> I don't want to see Flicker in any ranked match, so stop buffing his ass. That's all I, I Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> Um, yeah, but like I said, lots of little small tweaks. Anyone else that jumps out at you that's going to be a, a big threat or a big change this time? I saw a Crystal Jewel. That might make a comeback here. Um, yeah, yeah. Rhyme, Rhyme's still getting a little bit of a nerf. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a little surprised to see Celeste uh, getting a little bit of a nerf. Not that she didn't need one, but I, I didn't see her getting a, a spike in play, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think you're going to see Glaive be strong again. Because what the reason he wasn't as strong as a weapon carry is because you had other people who were better, like Black Feather, or you had CP people like Rhyme that, that made sense. But now you got a little bit of a, a nerf to Black Feather and a, almost the, the reverse of a buff to Glade. It, it may not make him overpower Black Feather or overpower Idris or other players, other heroes that are being played, but it should put him in the competition. Yeah. Right. So I, I, think, I think it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, you see Grace. You know, with the the, uh, the 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 buffs that she received, you know, like, did she really need a buff? But uh, <laughs> yeah, she's probably going to see a lot more play now. Right? Yeah, the Holy Shield uh, reduction increase and her energy cost is down for Holy Nova. So um, yeah, and her armor and shield. So she might just tweak up a little bit. Where Arden was like that top pick, he kind of got the buff. She gets a little nerf. You kind of come up a little bit. But that's what you want to do with each update. You wanted to adjust the heroes you want different people to come out and that's what makes mobas fun because you got to learn these heroes a little bit each time and like figure out who's the best pick i got a question for you do you mm-hmm. think we're going to see more kashka um let's see what was the, the kashka change so the damage from palsy fun was increased uh, across the board and then the twirly death crystal increase ratio or um Maybe I would I would like to see her a little more, but Taka just kind of fills that role, and Taka didn't change at all in this coming update. So I feel like Taka's still the better uh, assassin here out of the two of them. I'd agree with that. I think we'll see, but again, you might see somebody pull it out as a captain surprise pick. You might have some crazy stuff. I think mm-hmm. the one that's really funny to me is the Ringo buff. And um, I was I was playing with the Witch Doctors Guild, a guy that I play with pretty often. Uh, you you may know him, uh, Mustard Tiger. And I can't mm-hmm. remember who else we were playing with, but there's another guild member. Um, I think it was Gabriel VG. And we're playing Triple Q, which is bad idea in, any time <laughs> for us because we don't play enough to ever survive in that. But I said, uh, I said, man, you probably should pick Ringo, man. And and they were just dogging me about how weak Ringo was. And I'm like, he had a buff a little bit. I said, he really fits well. I said, we're probably going to run into this comp. He goes really well into this comp. A strong Ringo is going to do well here, right? And the way we play, because we are we were a very – I mean, those are two people I play with, them and Batabuchi, who play as aggressive as I do as a Captain Arden. So I said, okay. we're going to play aggressive, which is Ringo's main thing, and we're probably going to go into a Vox, which is exactly what you want to do. Right. So of course, we don't. I don't know who we pick. I think we picked Vox or something. Uh, or um, – uh, what's her name? Gwen. Gwen. We picked Gwen. Is either Gwen? I think it was Gwen. And the other team picks Ringo and destroys us. <laughs> I mean, just literally at one point one v three in all of us. And I'm just sitting here cracking up, laughing in a ranked match, by the way, at Bangalore. So I, the last thing I wanted to do was lose Elo sure. at that point. But <laughs> I'm just cracking up, laughing, on, and it's on stream. So I'm like, you know, all this is going on stream. Y'all got caught saying Ringo sucks. And you get caught getting bashed in by Ringo, yeah. but it's 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 really it's it's like it's exactly what you know, again um, PB is for and NivBet's goal is is to make it where there's not one person who's overly strong. It's just any hero in the right hands and the right comp is going to do the right thing, and that's mm-hmm. that's exactly what I think you found with Ringo. And this I think just makes him more. What I don't think he really needed this. I think he deserved it though, because right. Kessel so shouldn't he- have been able to outrange. Certain people shouldn't be able to outrange him just off the design of his, his the hero, you know. So yeah, so his not? range got increased from six to six point two, and then his early damage, his base damage is up. So yeah, Which he's already this an early seem- hero, so yeah, he's even yeah, more. Yeah, this seems like you should be invading. If you have a Ringo, go in, take these fights. 
and that that's really the thing, man. I mean, we'll, we'll see how in this works, but you're going to have a lot. I mean, I think it's kind of like the reverse. You took Arden, who's an easy hero, down because because he was the easy hero getting picked. You put Ringo up, who as an easy hero is now going to get more picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and with something like the the spell sword buff too, like that's going to benefit Ringo, who is kind of uh, energy dependent a little bit too. So having more damage out of that item may help him a lot. So. And who goes into saw well, Ringo? Mm-hmm. Ringo goes into saw pretty well. So now that's you true. got longer range, he <laughs> goes even better into saw. Nice. All right. So that's a, I guess, a good rundown of the the patch or the update. Everyone go over there and read it, check all these numbers, go over them and stuff. Uh, but then we did get some notes or some teases on 5v5, like two really fun, I guess, reveals from the Vanglory Twitter. And the first one I am super interested in because it sounds like the entire vision system of Vanglory is going to change in 5v5 with these new scout cams. Uh, did you did you see these and what do you what are your initial thoughts? Um, so the pictures look pretty cool. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what all I can really say, but I oh, mean, sure, okay. It's, you uh, know, obviously, scout cams. You know, uh, it, it it pretty much specifies in the the, the leak little photo they they release of what it's supposed to do. And when you look at um most other mobiles out mobiles out there, they have something similar to this, right? Um, mm-hmm. Whether I like it, whether I agree with it, you know, I think you're going to need it if the map is bigger. You're going to need scouts that will stay down longer, and where it's barely, basically barely walking over it blows it up. Well, this here is going to be something that they're saying only other scout traps will see, uh, scout cams will see it, right? And it will take you know whatever it takes to destroy it, right? Um, yeah. So these are kind of like if. If anyone's played League of Legends, they're like Pink Wards, or I don't even know if Pink Wards are like that anymore. I forget. I haven't played League of Legends in a long time. Uh, but they're like a, an invisible ward, and they can only be seen by the other invisible ward. And they usually take, I don't know, like sometimes it ranges from one hit to three hits to destroy one. Uh, but yeah, unlike scout traps where you run over them and they're gone, um, these are going to get placed down all over the map. So we may see contraption get changed where it has, or a different version of contraption that has scout cams and scout traps, or if scout traps are completely gone in 5v5. Um, it doesn't really say, it just says introduces a new vision system. So yeah, hard I mean, to say. Is it something that everybody traps. gets, or is it something that you know costs a lot of money, or is it cheaper to where you'd rather have it than a flare? You know, I mean, mm-hmm. all those things are really going to matter. So it, it's really just a tease, as you said before. Until you really know all the specs on it, you can't really tell whether it's better. But, again, you know most mobiles out there, which even though I haven't played anything else, one of the things that really got me to want to play this was watching, like, the Dota championships and stuff. And, again, they, they have things that are similar to this. So, yeah, uh, you know, depending on how it works, maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. And Bangalore, the good thing about them is while – as a game, you really can do whatever you want it. If the community doesn't like it, you know what they're going to do. They're going to fix it. Sure. <laughs> That's you, right. You don't, have to, you don't have to curse them. You just say, hey, I don't like it. And playoff is going to say, oh, crap, fix it. You know. Okay. So I mean, that's the great thing about Vainglory is uh, the community actually uh, determines a lot of what you're going to have and what's going to stay and what's not going to stay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other tease we got was this uh, River Shops uh I guess image. I am, I am kind of completely lost on what this is. But what it says is, uh, there are two shops away from base, um, and you purchase at your own peril. So there's some danger of purchasing this. But look out above. Helpful items parachute to the ground for heroes in need. Heroes with enough gold. That is. Um, so that's not clear if they come to you when you need them. If you're building, like, if you have enough gold for breaking point and you request this item, it drops down to you. Or these are, like, late game items that kind of show up to maybe help win the game. Like, your team needs this extra buff. You get this, and then you can just kind of you do an extra amount of damage for a little while. So river shop parachute things i i don't know they look like they're little like loot box kind of things on the parachute so uh, that's, a, that's exactly what i was thinking of like what am i thinking of that it reminds me of in loot box and loot crates is kind of what i was thinking in my head and i couldn't yeah. put my finger on it but you know when i first 
saw and, and read like the first couple of sentences, I'm like, okay, this is going to be some reason why you fight over the jungle, right? There's going to be these, these balloons flying over, dropping random things. And if mm-hmm. I control the, the jungle, I get these random things. Otherwise, we're fighting for it, right? But then it right. brings up the fact that there's gold involved. And like, okay, well, it, it is some sort of way I've got to buy these things. So it's not like I'm fighting over dropped items. I'm probably, I'm probably buying items. And whether it's a stagnant thing that, that floats around in certain areas or uh, – sorry, stagnant thing or whether it floats around in certain areas, obviously it doesn't specify here. But it basically answers the question that everybody has which is, will I be able to buy anywhere other than, than at, at home base? Because, you know, I, I play, um, I don't know if you played it, but I've played Arena of uh, Valor uh, of late. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and I chastise it quite often for not being better than Vainglory in, in multiple <laughs> ways, you know. But it, and while it does have some things, it has advantages. One thing that you, you find in Arena of Valor is you, you, um, you can kind of buy any time. Right. It, it's kind of hard because of their, their structure system. So this is probably going to give you a way to be able to buy without going home, but also not relying on a structure system the way Arena of Valor has. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like, what if you buy this item? Could someone steal it? Like, does it go to this location and like, oh, yeah, you know, Blackfeather just bought this. I'm going to go take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good mm-hmm. question, man. Can you, you know, if, if we can go around Bangalore just and trade jacking people, we've got the new <laughs> right. Grand Theft Auto of MOBAs, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like these are both two very interesting things. I think we're gonna see uh small teases like this probably every day up until worlds here when they get to play the play the match on the last day and we finally get to see this uh the map played and some of these items and new things in the work. So I I'm super excited. I think I'm almost more excited for the 5v5 reveal than I am for Worlds, but I'm excited for Worlds too. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for one more reveal, which is important to me, which is who is playing against the uh, the Southeast Asia team in the 5v5 uh, game. You know, is it going to be, you know, Niv met and people playing against them? Is it going to be another pro team that maybe got or considered got getting the snub as far as not getting in? You know, I mean, I would love to see um, a team that, that didn't get to make it to – world mm-hmm. that maybe should have like sk or um like um or even, uh, or even rogue here like they were yeah, so rogue. close <laughs> I, I would i would love to see that man i mean maybe even a, a th- that'd be great to have ca um na and um in eu play a a best of three you know you know a gauntlet style 5v5 i think that's yeah. a great reward for them for how hard each of those teams did uh, work to get into the uh the world's yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who's going to fly them down there and pay for their stay and stuff, but you know, if they could figure all that out, I think that would be great. And that's one thing I'm still waiting to hear is is who's playing in these things. And right, of course, yeah. uh, and and and, and you, you kind of getting me to sneak in some five v five data here. I want you to tell me who Gangstars is picking up because they better pick up somebody because I, I can't not be a fan of Gangstars this season. Yeah, I, I guess it's. I think uh, I don't know what Gangstars is going to do, but I do. Th- think uh it's tough to say if the whole team's gonna change um you know they did have you know synergy problems but they were a new team going into that but they do need to find some players that you know work well together um xenotech has played with a lot of people uh he's yeah. been on a lot of teams he so of uh, is that is that uh is that good or bad i don't know that's that's gonna be said like maybe they're looking for people that works well with xenotech or maybe uh he doesn't make it for their 5v5 team i don't know so it's tough to say <laughs> well at this point i don't care pick up an eu team pick up an na team just pick up some team that's, that's mm. how i feel i think that's gangsters fine. will stay na i think that's a, just my thought there they're na team and don't have as maybe as much following in some of the other regions but i think they'll stay na <laughs> well i hope so too I, yeah. I, I do hope for that i do hope for that uh who do you think is going to win Worlds, just throwing it out there. Who's did you do your bracket? Who you got taking the taking the cake? Ooh man, I knew you were gonna ask me that. Um, <laughs> I, I had to I had to go with uh, TSM. Uh, okay, winning. but um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, you know, I'm not a you know, a lot of people have kind of fallen off the the Asian teams just because of their roster issues. I'm not because I remember again, I went to Worlds and I, I watched them come in with Willie, who wasn't part of their team, and just wreck right. Okay. But I, I also don't think 
they necessarily were the best team at Worlds, which is what everybody says. I, I don't I don't necessarily think that. I think NA yeah, psyched themselves out for the most part. I mean, you know, when you watched uh, TSM going against them, I think they outdrafted themselves, right? And I think that they were, as everybody else were, they were timid because I think they had a little bit of fear from, from um, you know, watching Rocks Armada or Phoenix Armada at that time. I think that they let the fear – psych them out versus so we right. never, i don't think we ever really saw the best of tsm versus them right and so i'd like to see what happens when now some people think we're favored some people don't i'd like to see what vegas's odds are but um i'm, I'm still going in a I, I, okay. I don't think you can prove me otherwise in, in, uh, yet yeah i have i have cloud nine taking it so you know i'm still on the na hype train here so I'm on, I'm on that bandwagon. That's one of the same things too, man. It's like, you know, every time that, you know, Flash X and them will go against Cloud9, I think they did the same thing they did when they went against uh, Phoenix Armada. They mm-hmm. just, they they almost like they think Cloud9 is better. And I, I've told Flash this on, on Twitter a couple of times, you know, stop thinking that you're not the best, whether because you are. And whether, <laughs> he is or, whether he is or not, if you think you are, you're going to play like you are. And, you know, I, I find that when I play Arden, like when I'm playing Arden, and I'm talking crap to the other team, like I'm in that hype mode, I actually win the matches. Versus when I'm just playing, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm good at Arden, I'm just going to play. No, man, when I'm literally in like, oh, I got to punch you in the face, man. I got to Vanguard, yeah. I got to do this. All of a sudden, it's like, it's a whole different play style than, than just playing Arden, right? Yeah, you got to psych yourself up. Yeah, yeah. like, what's you that like it, video yeah. of, there's all those videos, like but that little kid one, like, you are the best, you are, <laughs> you are great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they need. No more analysts. They got enough. I think their team is good enough. They don't need analysts. You just need hype men. Just, yeah, just, need hype just hype men. Just <laughs> <laughs> They need that little uh, what's the guy, Mister Sweet or whatever it is, or Doctor Pepper. They need that guy oh. just just sitting on their shoulder, telling them how good they are all day long. <laughs> I like that idea. That sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of Broken Eyes. Thanks for joining me. This was fantastic. I appreciate it, man. I, I, you know, I listen to you all the time, so I, I'm happy to be on. Uh, where can people find you or get in touch if they have any thoughts or questions about this update and want to get your opinions? Well, I'm basically broken eyes everywhere you go. At broken eyes with a Z, so B R O K E N E Y E Z. My Twitter does have an LLC behind it because in a former life I was a media arts major, so I did some <laughs> design stuff. But uh, everywhere else, you know, I'm, I'm just broken eyes on Twitch. Um, you know, on Discord, hit me up anytime, man. I'm down to help. Uh, nice. And do, do you do you have a stream schedule, or is it kind of uh, a little random? It's a it's a tad random. Um, as I was telling you earlier, I basically for the first three weeks of the month, I'll just go balls to the wall, just streaming as much as possible. But my industry does require me to work uh, fairly hard at the end of the month, so those times I'll typically uh, fall off a little bit in the stream just to conserve energy to maintain at work right so it just it just varies varies on, okay. on how i'm feeling but i mean as far as i'm concerned i can stream every day it, it okay. doesn't stop me cool well everyone i'll include uh, links in the show notes and the descriptions everyone go over there follow you up check out your streams uh always always a good time especially when you're playing arden you know gotta yeah, you gotta pick up some tips and skills there <laughs> i'm not stopping anytime soon so they better keep on nerve i'm not going anywhere <laughs> Awesome. Uh, and then you can also follow Shadow the Vein on Twitter at Shadow the Vein and website ShadowTheVein.com. All the episodes get posted there. Um, and I'll be back uh, next week with 184 and, you know, figure out this new hero some more. Hopefully I've had some more games on it and hopefully I know a little bit what I'm doing. But take care. Let's get this over with.